So for this, um, what I see is cartoony proportions um, beneath realistic rendering. Uh, that's biggest no-no. Why? Because what happens is that the form w w tackles it directly. It's like mixing... Uh, what's the most deadly mix? We were talking about it the other day. What was it again? Um, toilet bowl cleaner with that other thing that causes bleach. Um, they never, they're never going to be friends. They're never going to be friends. And mixing them together will only d result in death. So think of it like that. Think of it in that sort of drastic mentality. It's because you can never, never merge those two together. When you do, you have a very small audience for it. And it's never effective in producing that beautiful concept art that you do see in games where everything is three-dimensional. Everything has been considered with form and um, function. Function is very important. And no gradient shading. Everything is shaded as if it has form. And so what do I mean by that? <clears throat> well, first let me show you the before and after of the liquify. So you see what, what I meant by the cartoony proportions. Before, do you see how they were very cartoony? Very thin waist, big thighs, tiny head. Very typical of any cartoon anime drawings. And that you're, you're shading everything so realistically. What I did was I pushed her torso out so it can balance and mass with the rest of her body. Do you see that tiny little change? Do you see what it did? And even after you've done this, you can make stylistic uh, choices like making the thighs a little bit bigger. It's doable. Now you can do this because the head isn't small, so small that it no longer makes any sense. Do you see what I mean, Telsey? You see, if you want those big thighs, those, you know, dragon nest big thighs or chibi big thighs, you can go ahead and do it. But before, the main issue was that sh her whole head was too small, almost like leaning all on one side like she was made of paper and there she had no girth or fat or muscle to her or mass okay all right so that was number one number two um, you have a bit of trouble I recommend watching that video about muscle and fat because right here you're confusing fatty areas with areas that are muscular and what we get is one bit of muscle and a tiny bit of fat instead of balancing the two together. When you have abs, when you look at abs and really developed abs, there are areas in it that are fat and areas in it that are muscle. This muscle area here has fatty parts on it, but they're not really fat because they don't hang down. What they do is they stack on each other. And so if you want to create a stomach that looks flat, and, but you don't want abs that intense, what you do is remember to balance the fat with the muscle so that you have that nice look. Do you want that area fatty and feminine? Do you want it a little bit more masculine and muscular? It's your call at that point, but... Remember... Babe, did Jesse stay home? And why is the TV on? Why is the TV on? Oh, uh, yeah, it is. Was that Guild Wars? Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to figure out a way to make these the stomach look a little bit more believable. A little bit of shadow of the coat. Shadow of that. And then... A nice little torso tuck. And what you did was you created a, a very defined line there. You don't need that intense line because remember, lines speak more than you think they do. They're very defined, very sharp, and they translate a deeper ridge. That line represented like a cut in her stomach instead of just a gentle curvature. So this, this works better to represent the curvature of her lean torso. Next thing is balancing out different areas. And let me tell you something, Chelsea. The bigger boobs, the better boobs. I know I hate that disgusting rule, but especially with concept art, it really helps fill in the, the lack of muscular um, uh, distribution on the female body. So what happens is if you don't draw big boobs, what happens is that you have to make up for it with muscles. And not everyone wants a muscular character, unless they specify a very small bust. And it comes, a bust is one big part of drawing female characters. 
because, um, again, it's a translation of the female's girth rather than putting in muscles. What you do is add in more femininity. So that's why I said expand the thighs a little bit, which you can do. It'll really help make up for, because when you draw men, you know, big muscles, big abs, big everything, and tiny little legs. For females, as you might already understand, the role of the female body, et cetera, et cetera, areas that are intensified there, the role there, what you can do is and, and, and really enhance that, bring that to life a little bit more. So the breast area, the bust, the thigh area, um, typ typical measurements like tiny waist, you can exaggerate those, but exaggerate them in proportion, make sure everything is balanced. Um, don't do it improportionately. There's improportionate exaggerations and there's proportionate exaggerations. Make sure you um, you stick to that. Um, you have a lot of dark areas here, like a lot, and you don't need it that dark in those areas. When you throw this into color, and I know you've experienced this already, what you'll get is a muddy, muddy texture. Um, and you don't want that. What you want is very, very open, very clean uh, form so that if you do if, if design this and they send it into um, you know, a 3D developer or a 3D modeler and they have to model this character for the game, they'll know how to play with these values and how to pl play with these colors. If it's too dark, it doesn't reveal enough information about the character's um, body type. All those little forms or details of form that are lost with a value that is that dark. And you don't want a value that is that dark. So think about where the light source is and respond to that. Areas that are exposed to this this sleeve here or whatever this is. This part of her shirt. This part of her cape. So you see how we're not going darker anymore? We're staying light. But what we are doing is we're creating a very, very gentle palette. Already we're anticipating the, the colors that are going to come. So we want the colors to be able to fit in. If everything is dark, what we end up getting is a really muddy tone, like really muddy. And that really destroys the image for us. So think about the way the light responds. Do you see how the, the, this cape of hers has cast a shadow? Um, Telsey, do you see how it's um, cast a shadow on her head? This is something you missed. And when you think about things three-dimensionally, these kinds of things you don't miss anymore. Because you start to think three-dimensionally. You think in the way a physicist would, if they're trying to explain how light works. And it never hurts to make a study, you know, just for the sake of seeing how, how shadows are cast on an object. Just to see how um, the, the, the girth of an object is revealed when a shadow is cast upon it. You see what the shadow looks like. Um, a long time ago, believe it or not, women used their shadows to determine um, what they were wearing, what they were doing. As well as very, 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 uh, uh, really bad t t uh, mirrors. But before mirrors, it was shadows, believe it or not. Shadows act like, you know, they're exactly the same thing as a mirror. They, they reveal our form to us, even though it's not perfectly detailed. They are reflections of our form on an object. Just same thing, same principle with a mirror. Also typical things like silhouettes and stuff like that that all emerged when the mirror was introduced into society. All of this stuff you pick up, you know. So all right now I'm thinking about where the light is coming from. So, so far we have a lot more form than before. Do you see how dark and, and almost floppy it was? Because your your values were way too dark, and now the we're we're working slowly towards to see the areas that truly need that darkness. What uh, what we need to see here is a little bit less dark areas, so that we can appreciate any areas that do need the dark. Yeah, there was not much makeup back then when it was just shadows and and it was um, shadow puppets like back in the Middle Ages. They did have mirrors, but it was mostly judging on what another person said about how you looked. It's in this document, uh, a documentary about makeup and how makeup came with the mirror. Areas like this that are darker. This is going to be grayed out. This knee needs to be defined more to convince me that this socket line here is really tucked in.
remember about the thigh, how the thigh areas need to be revealed. This is the kind of stuff I want you to think about. I don't want you to paint with a value that is so dark there's no way of saving the image. And as for glowy eyes, even though they are glowy, they're actually not that white. They're just lighter, a touch lighter than everything else. They don't have to be like 15 or 20 shades lighter. It can be like a tiny little shade. It's still effective, trust me. Don't forget all the light spots and dark spots, and you have a face. You don't have to do too much shading, because what happens when you guys use shading as a crutch? When you don't know how to do something, you fill it up with dark spots. And that sort of hides all the details for you, so, oh, I don't have to worry about details, there's darkness here. Well, you're only fooling yourself at that point. You're only, you know, causing yourself trouble because you're going to have to put details there. It's like a very easy way out, and it's very obvious when an artist uses it. Don't use darkness as sort of a way to hide away or shy away from, uh, from details and appropriate detailing. Okay. A lot of that uh, League of Legends fan art, I mean, not fan art, uh, concept art, the artists have used such a bright, glowy color for the eyes to suggest the magic or the whatever in the character. And it is, in my opinion, it is way too light. Like, it is almost flattening. It just really flattens the character. I've seen so many of them. And it's sort of the artist, you can tell it's the same artist because he's taking a way out. When you use dark values that are too dark and too light, it's sort of a way out of detail. And it's very, very embarrassing um, when someone finds out and asks you, okay, dude, why is there no detail here? You could have at least added a circle of white, or circle of shade dark to represent where the iris is, you know, all that stuff. It's not that hard to go that extra step. Okay, so we'll take a look. It may look a little bit light and foggy to you, but in all honesty, before it was way too dark and way too flat. Um, sorry, Fuchsia, I've been a bit busy. I don't really keep track of who I have and haven't critiqued for. Okay, and then when you jump in, jump in another step closer, and then now you shade darker. And then when you're done with that, another step closer and a tiny shade darker. And, and then that eventually will lead you into a nice detailed image. But as long as you're zoomed out and you're thinking about all these proportions, you won't lose. What I recommend, a stylistic little jump, is the shrinking of this leg a little bit behind and pointing her foot that way. Sorry, I know it looks retarded right now, but and then point her. That's a rude, rude word to use. Sorry about that. And point her knee in that direction. And that way, it looks like she's stable. You're trying to do this where the you know the both legs are in, like this. And that's really, um, you know, impractical. So pointing her leg out this way, what it will lead you to is a more stable position. Remember that whole science of standing character. I talked about that for like an hour and a half. So you have a good amount of information in there in that video if you guys want to learn how to draw a standing character. Really think about the principles of drawing a standing character. As you've noticed, my teething, teaching, teething, teaching method isn't... Um, you know, just I'm going to show you how it's done and then forget about it. I try to teach you the principle behind it so that you can figure out other ways on your own without the need, you know, to have someone always there point you in, in the how to and always need a tutorial. A little bit of light there. The feet seem to be a tiny bit um, small. Just gonna expand them a little bit. <coughs> How do you flip a picture like that? You go to edit, 
edit keyboard shortcuts image go to flip canvas horizontal and choose your desired uh, right here choose your desired for me it's control alt w accept okay and then okay so that's pretty much all I have to, to for you um, you have to keep rendering it of course I can't render it here completely um, day seven from Breno this is very well done extremely well done very light everything has stayed light um, not much I could ask for really at this point extreme improvement from from day one extreme improvement I wish um, you would show other people as well the day one that you had uh, Brenna, do you have a copy of your day one so I can show everyone? What I usually do, Brenna, is I um, throw some shadows on the upper lip because what that will do is show which part of the lip is facing the light and which part isn't. And so I, t I, I on purpose make the upper lip darker because it is pointing down away from the light. Okay, the shadow of the nose needs to be more defined over here and over here. And a little bit lighter in those areas. A little bit of sh shadow creasing on the upper eyelid. You made the lashes seem a bit light, as if he was blonde or almost ginger. But remember, the point of lashes is to act as shade, so the body biologically, unless you're albino or ginger, will automatically make your eyebrows and your lashes darker. So notice that even if the woman is blonde, her, her lashes are a bit dark. Nevertheless because it sort of acts as a shade, natural umbrella. For your eyes so that they can function in the sun. Okay, you need to paint the bottom lid as much as the upper eyelid. I need to see an actual crease of the eyeball where the eyeball emerges from the bones, from the socket hole. You can get one of those light shades place it in there so it's more convincing so I can tell you've understood and remembered and applied the function of the oh sorry Telsey you've been responding to me on Skype I'm sorry I didn't notice Um, the freckles that you have are a bit, you know, a bit artificial looking. I need to see different sizes spread around with shades around them. Because there are freckles, the skin will automatically look like it's a shade darker than anywhere else. So automatically make that area here darker like this. And then add the freckles in. Because the freckles aren't just dots, white, black dots on a white surface, they're actually gray dots on a grayer surface or dark gray surface remember that it's like uneven skin color it's not just the freckles the freck freckles are the extreme discoloration of the skin but the whole area of a, of a person's face is generally darker when they have freckles okay freckles spread not just in that area above the above the eyebrow and a little bit beneath the eye, a little bit around the nose. Make it convincing. Keep it co consistent and believable. Freckles are almost scattered all over the face when someone has them. They're just more clustered around the nose near the areas that the sun hits because the skin is sensitive like that. In the T-zone, so this area is where the sun hits. Make sure it's grays. Don't paint freckles with blacks. You don't need blacks at all. Okay. And then that's that. That's if you want to go that far with the freckles. Really, it's your choice. A little bit of light on the inner corner of the eye. Right here and here. Do you see how that brings the eyes to life? 
and a little bit of light beneath the brows and shape out sculpt the brow bone the brow bone needs to be sculpted to believe to make it believable that the skeleton is sticking out and the inner part of the eyebrow here needs to be a tiny bit darker because eyebrow hairs grow thicker here and thinner here and so well, how do you translate that in a drawing well paint it darker in the inner corners not so dark not so defined don't make it scowls brows make everything still fluffy but out here things get a bit light and sparse if you're painting a male a little less defined eyebrows less of a clean area beneath the eye beneath the arch of the eyebrow a little more messy men don't pluck their eyebrows as much as ladies do honestly no one should pluck their brows They're such beautiful things I think I have an eyebrow fetish. <laughs> I think I love thick brows. They're so expressive and they frame the face so beautifully and they work so well in an image. And they really make up for what the image is lacking. Shouldn't the forehead be more flat? That was just... I think that's all the forehead needs. I don't know what you mean by flat, Matteo. What you can do to make the ice eyebrow socket seem more um, outward is bring a little bit of light and put it above the eyebrow. Do you see how the eyebrow looks like it's emerging? Because it's capturing a little bit of the light. And so what we're doing here, it's too ed edgy. And um, Breno, you missed some very important details here for the eye. You need the shadow of the upper eyelid on the face. It's a very important detail. It makes the eyes look very believable. And this is very well done. No references um, uh, from what I know. Um, you, well, you've been painting this for a while now, or your 14-day challenge. So this is very well done for, for, for an image. Very good instinct for faces without the references. Very well done. This is what 14 day challengers are supposed to look like. And you've been, I think you've been doing it for a while now, so I might even consider this your 14 days. Even though it's four, day, day 7, you might have kept on it. Because I know it's been more than 14 days since you started yours. Okay? So a little bit more detail and before very flat not much definition with sculpting and shadow you need a little bit darker to know where the shadows are going a little bit more believable freckle distribution and contouring you need the shadow of the upper eyelid on the eyeball I hope you know what that means I've talked about it so much um, eyebrows need to be a little bit more furry a little bit more believable. The texture needs to be a little bit more believable. The lips, the upper upper lip, I darken that up. You tend to have a very cartoony lip when you have the line and then you have the dot dot on either side. Okay, and so save and I'll send that back. Um, Ryu's. Okay, Ryu. Right now you're pretty early into the image. And what we're seeing here is a um, really, really rough value layout. And I like how you've kept it light so far. One of the biggest issues here is that I, I want to know that you know where to place the darks. Where, what comes next is what you're asking, correct, Ryu? Are you asking what comes next? What do I do next? Um, what you do next is you define the dark areas, the dark spots of the face. Um, the dark spots of the face go something like this and I've made a lot of rules for those for those and, and those rules never change they keep the same no matter what no matter what ha what happens okay so the first dark spot is these all right 
two dark spots there and there. The next ones are the nostrils, but the nostrils seem to be pointing downward. So all I'm going to do is add one tiny little sliver here to represent where the edge of the nose is pointing to, because she is looking down and then looking up. Next up is the corners, the lip corners, right here and here. After you get those dark spots, Ryu, you, you have like, um, has anyone ever built a porch? You know, you have to stick the sticks in the ground and map it out everything with string before you apply the pillars, and before you apply the planks. You have to map everything out first with very, very loose material. Sticks, you know, tiny little um, uh, strings, all that, uh, all that stuff in order for you to measure everything out and stay safe. So you map out the environment, do like a, a, a parameter check and then jump in and use the heavy machinery, which is sawing or rendering or the heavy brush or heavy opacity. All of this stuff is very, very similar. It's like mapping out the image for yourself so that you don't make the mistakes later or that you don't forget to make these mistakes later. Not only are these useful, but they help finish the image. They help get the image done. What I recommend is making everything just a touch darker on the upper part of her face so that it looks like she's sort of looking into a car or posing and frame the area with the values and then jump in with the shadow values because I have no time right now and then like I did with Breno's eyebrows I'm going to do with her eyebrows darken the upper lip not that much sorry Darken the upper lip and the bottom lip. Darken a little bit there. I don't have the reference, so I don't know. I'm just going to go by my own instinct of portraiture. And then apply the basic fundamentals. So first things first. What comes after uh, the, the dark spots? The light spots come after the dark spots. And the light spots go something like this. First of all, this is color. It's not completely black and white. <clears throat> The light spot on the nose, cheekbones, eyelids. Don't forget these, Ryu. Once you have these down, you're good to go. It's like a toolkit. It's like your, your, your utility belt. Between those two light spots is a eye socket, light spot beneath here and here, inner corner here and here, lip here and here, milk mustache, here and here, and this is called rough work. Yes, this is the infamous rough work that is very, very, it's not self-explanatory at all. A lot goes into the rough stage than anywhere else. Anywhere else is just mindless rendering. It's easy to do, but rough work is where it all happens. This is where all the blueprints are made, the inspiration goes in. And so... What you have to do at this stage, again, map out your porch before you build it. <coughs> so we have all those areas here. Now what are we going to do? We're going to render. We're going to get a shadow in here. And soon, before you know it, what we're going to start seeing is a face. A nicely done face. Everything is ready, good to go. The nose is believable. Don't forget the shadow of the upper eyelid. This is what I mean by upper eyelid shadow. This shadow over the white part of the eyeball from the upper lid cast down by the light. You see what happens to the eye? Her eye looks beautiful and real and believable. Paint the bottom lid and then throw some darkness on the outer corner for effect and glamour. And then this is where the image is really going to pop. Light on the bottom parts of her eyes top corners and there you have it. Does everyone see the magic of dark and light spots? Does everyone see what I'm talking about? Does everyone understand the principle here? It's not a guest game and I've taught this for two years now and a lot of people haven't picked it up despite the fact that they've been in this class over and over and over again. These dark and light spots aren't just Istabrak's, you know, 
obsessive way of painting a face. No, this is an actual proven science. They represent the actual functions of a human face, where the shadows lie, where everything is. Trust me when I tell you it works because I just showed you it works. And what do we have here? We have a face. People will pay you for this face. For this face. Your, your pocket will be heavier because of this principle. How about you believe that? And, and, and if they've ever, if anything has ever been taught um, that's, you know, that effective, let me know and I want to learn that thing. But as for me, as for what I know, this is what I know and I'm sharing it with you. I really want you guys to take advantage of this because people pay thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars just to have a face that, that comes to life this quickly. It's not magic. I'm not gifted. I didn't know how to read until I was 10 years old. Okay, so I'm not saying that um, I know everything here. I just know one tiny little clue on how to finish faces. You guys might be able to, you know, it might help you determine. Yeah, I had to go to ESL classes till I was in grade six, and then I transferred to a private school, and they don't have ESL because they're jerks. So I had to learn. I read up, picked up Lord of the Rings, and I started reading. And ever since then, I've been an English major. Isn't that funny? The person who doesn't know how to read turns out to be an English major. I have to read like fifteen books in a month. Okay, so do you see this? I'm just going to try to give the hair a little bit of definition. All right. Yes, it's a surprise. I'm not an art major in school. And again, again with that, you don't have to go to school and spend thousands of dollars for some hack job to tell you that, you know, you're doing it wrong. It's, it's so easy. It's so simple. An ape can do it. And um, no offense to apes. But I'm just trying to show you how ridiculous some, some, some students are. They think that it's so hard and it's so easy. They just want to take the difficult road for some reason. And I'm telling them, dude, you can do this. You can. It's not a, it's not a guessing game. It's never been a guessing game. It's science. Exactly. Don't look for shortcuts because you've just been given a shortcut. This is the shortcut of all shortcuts. If you know where to place the dark and light spots on the face, and I've already shown it to you. I've mapped it out. I've written it in the book. Um, and I don't know. I don't know what else to say, honestly. Everything after that, you can use a reference to figure out where the shadows happen in a certain kind of nose. You can use all kinds of stuff. You don't want her eye to be that light. Darken her eye by all means. I'm not forcing you to make her have blue eyes. Just remember where all these dark spots are. Okay, I kind of liked her eyes lighter a bit. whatevs okay darker on the inner part of the nose everything after this is simple spot rendering everything after this is simple sitting there for five hours straight making the hair look believable making the eyes look believable adding pink on the inner part of the eye um, I can sit here and render this image for the next hour and a half until it looks absolutely realistic but doesn't need to. At this point, people will pay you for this level of work. <clears throat> Edsta. Um, it's a book that I wrote with all my things that I know in it. <laughs> for, and it for buying it funds the class. Um, so the class stays free. Even though the class has been a bit slow lately because I've been a bit sick and been really busy. Life gets in the way. Um, so, But, but uh, the class is helpful. Again, um, Ryu. Uh, this is the sort of the detailing stage, and what you can do at this stage: add lashes, define more of the shadows here and there. If she has freckles, you know, throw those freckles in there. You can never go wrong with freckles. Do whatever you want. But how many minutes have I spent on this already? And this is not me showing off my speed. Trust me, I'm a complete idiot. How many minutes have I spent on this so far? Turned from this to this because of a simple rule. It's dark spots and light spots. Um, because uh, I had no control over the beginning of the image or when the image started, I'm just going to show you things that I would change if this was my painting. I wouldn't make the eyes so large. They are a bit oversized. I don't. Again, I don't have a reference. I'm just using my instinct. Before they were a bit, I don't know, this tiny little change here satisfied me. Thank you, Amr. I hope I stay better. It's been it's been going on and on, but 
<laughs> no offense to apes. Um, Dan, go ahead, send, send it. I'm very sorry. <coughs> okay, and for those who are asking about the book, uh, for the recent anatomy class that we've run, I will be also publishing a book for that. And basically, for those who aren't the best note takers, I've written everything that I have described in the videos in the book as well. So it's like something you can carry around that's like a checklist of everything you need in your anatomy. Um, uh, I'm not saying it's going to compete with Bern Hogarth or um, Andrew Loomis, but um, but I hope it helps you. It's tiny little things I've learned about anatomy as well. Um, open and closed gestures, all that stuff. Most of the stuff that you've never heard of because it's on my own personal method of learning or thinking about it. But um, but I hope it helps you guys. And then Erie. Um, I th yeah. Where is Elise? There we go. Ooh, is that? Oh. I thought it was um the girl from Brave. Merida. Um, isn't is here today in case you're accepting things? I can't come, but I'm super stressed sometimes. Okay. Um, I'll have to leave soon. I've got like seven minutes left. Um, when, when does Adam come out? Okay. Do you remember when we... Oh, one second, guys. Okay, so I think I can look at all of these um, before leaving, but I don't think I can accept any more. Um, Niz is not here. I'm sorry, Niz, but I'm just going to try to get everyone's done. Okay, for this one, uh, what we have here, it looks like she has shaved off. You know the monks that shave off half their head and leave the, leave the, leave the, no, not the forehead, babe. Leave the, the pigtail or whatever it is. Leave the braid back. That's what it looks like because you've expanded the size of the forehead. And what you need with this kind of thing is that when people have a lot of trouble with, with the hairline, and I don't know why really, um, I don't know the mentality behind it, but I, but I try to think about the time when I first started painting digitally or painting all together. I realized that my hairlines in my drawings were, you know, all fake and stiff and wig-like when I started realizing that I need to paint hair. I need to draw the hair lines, the lines of hair here and there. I need to throw in some loose hairs that haven't been collected into the braid. Um, baby hair, all kinds of hair is collected in this area. I need to think about the way different hairlines work, like a widow's peak or um, hair discoloration in the in the hairline area here. Hair tends to be it tends to be a bit lighter, revealing the skin beneath it because it's very light baby hair. And after I realized that, that's when I started painting more believable hairlines. When I started realizing the function, basically, behind it. Or not the function, but the activity. The active development of the hair there. And so what I did here was I just threw the hair back towards the forehead. Added a believable hairline. I'm going to blend that this way. Babe, is my iPod in the car? <coughs> no, it's in here. You used it yesterday. I don't know. That's why I asked you. <laughs> okay, um, a little bit of trouble with the nose. Not only is it the hairline, but it's the features here. Dark and light spots haven't been fully, fully taken advantage of. We need a light spot on the chin, a light spot here and here before things look a little bit more realistic. And finally, measurements are a bit out of place. I'm gonna push this um, eyebrow down, push this eye upward, push this nose this way, and push down the chin to be a little bit softer. Um, so, push the ears this way, and then thin out that neck. Plug-in? No, it's not a plug-in. Um, plug-ins are overrated. <laughs> it's 
people trying to make money off of things that people already have. But uh, plug-in, no. It's filter liquify. It is extremely useful, especially if the commissioner cannot make up his mind. <laughs> he keeps changing everything. Ah! So I just go on screen share and I just say, okay, what do you need fixed? And then I fix it with liquify. That's it, they're repainting everything for that little. Sorry, I've had a lot to rant about lately. It's just been a really tough week, or month, I should say. <coughs> okay. Um, as for everything else, um, don't. This, this shadow beside the nose on either side is so overrated. People really overdo this. You don't need a shadow on either side of the nose for the nose to look like a nose. All you really need for a nose is the sh shadow beneath the nose and the nostril, which is the dark spots. That's it. Trust me. You don't need this Michael... No, not God bless Michael Jackson. I don't know. This really contoured makeup chick, makeup guru, contouring crud that is fooled that has fooled people for generations. Trust me, you don't need it. Just see how the nose is so beautiful now? You've worked so hard on the nose and the Cupid's bow, you're ruining it all by adding this dark little... I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. Dark spots, and look what we have here, Eerie. We have something that speaks a little bit more to the audience with realism than anything else. Dark in the upper lip. Milk mustache. And do you see that? And a little bit more rendering and this can start looking a little bit more like a face. More and more like a face. Before, do you see how her hairline looked cut off? Eerie? And now it's looks like it's attached to the to the head growing normally. Um, the eye here needs to be a little bit more. And then light spots on the beneath the eyebrow eyebrow. Remember the light spots, Eerie? Remember, remember? Remember, remember? I shake you. I shake you now. With your collar. Do you remember what I just did with the light spots and the dark spots? That's exactly what I'm doing here. I swear. I swear I don't have a magic wand. I swear I'm not best friends with a wizard. It's really simple. Look. Just look at the magic. Look. I'm so passionate about this. I'm sorry, but look. Light spots. Oh, look at how the face comes to life. Does everyone see this? A little bit of shading on the outer corners. <laughs> the Wizard of Oz is a hoax. Everybody knows that. Does everyone see? Okay. Very, very easy. Easy to paint a face. Way overrated. Way overrated. I mean, like, challenge me by asking me to paint metal. And that's something I don't know how to do. I think I know how to do it, but when it actually comes down to it and a commissioner is asking me, I'm like, uh, can I just make it leather? Uh, can I? Oh, it would look much better if it was. I try to, <laughs> I try to manipulate them into choosing something else. It usually works, but sometimes it doesn't. They just ditch. I ah, screw them. Who needs it? <clears throat> but as for faces, easy to grasp because it's so basic. The faces are the same no matter where you go. And if the face has an issue with it, then it's a medical issue. It's an actual um, uncanny valley issue. That's why people get scared when they see someone who's been shot in the face. God help them all. It's because their face has been distorted. They're in the uncanny valley. They're realistic, but it's not working, and it freaks people out. That's why it's scary to look at monsters whose faces are, are um, contorted weirdly and... Um, 
morphed oddly. But as for faces, human functioning faces, nose, mouth, eyes, and you know where the dark and light spots are. Shape those to be masculine or feminine. Large nose, larger light spot, and that's it. You have the formula to painting faces. Maybe that's what I should have named the book. How to paint a face. The formula to portraiture. Meh. Nah. Shadow on the of the face on the body. Do you see how now things are a bit more believable? They work a little bit better. And she's actually looking like she's looking up, dazing, thinking about her husband or whoever's it is. A bit of the braid. Come around this way. Okay? Do you see the realism? A tuck, a, just a touch of thing to tuck the, the cheekbone into the face, and all of a sudden she looks like Naomi Campbell in her good days. Before? Really look, look, look at this. Look at the difference. This is the power of dark and light spots. Before, after. <laughs> that is the rub, okay? That is the power of dark and light spots. I really want you guys to, to consider this method as a functioning method, okay? Think, rethink where you want to place the hair, by the way, because it's really, really in the wrong spot. The neckline is over here, so the hair should be falling this way, like that, okay? Especially if her braid is really, really tight. All right, I'll send that back to you, sister. Dan Jufo, um, tiny issues. You got the principles right. You figured out the functions. However, balance, measurement, there is none of that here. No measurement. I don't see you measuring out the size of the head. Where where are the lines that are telling you and telling me that, that you've you used these lines? The head the the body is eight heads long, four on the bottom, four on the top half. Okay. You seem to underrate the the the, the, the further leg. Why? What did the further leg do to you? <laughs> Joking. Man, I'm a bitch today. Um, just trying to trying to balance everything. Okay. I'm sorry about my recent absence, guys. I'm really, really sorry about it. <clears throat> I've been having a bit of trouble, and we just need to catch up with ourselves. Well, that's life, right? If it doesn't keep you on your toes, then you're just rich and you, you know you don't benefit from when times are calm and and it's it's class is such a good thing that we know it can't last all the time like that like if, if we if we got to stream every single day and enjoyed each other's company and enjoy the development of art and every single day would that make it as special as it is when we do actually have time and get together and just talk about drawing i mean isn't that the best just talking about drawing I think someone's at the door. Okay, so remember, fat hangs, muscle wraps. So the fat of her stomach is going to hang. We're going to see her belly button hang this way. Okay, the rib cage is way, way too intense. And finally, the hip. And once I fix this, you'll see the difference, the huge difference. Push out the hip. Even though her other leg is tucked away, her hip would still be visible because that's her thigh. Okay? Before, after. Before, after. We've, th we've thought about the basic functions of these body forms and what we're doing is representing them properly. By the way she's standing, her heel would be on the ground, like this. Okay, and think about the way the face is. Right now you have the head 
horizontal line pointing this way even though she's looking up, so why not make it point this way? That way we can make her look in the right direction. Everything okay? I gotta go soon. Uh... All right. These lines here that you have, you can't determine where the fat is until you have the skeleton. So what I want you to do is plan it. Plan it next time before you draw it. We need skeleton before we have flesh. If flesh came first, then, well, flesh does come first, sort of, but that's in the fetal stage, and I really don't want to talk about that right now. But, um, but let's just say a human is born just like, boop, just like that, without development. Because that's how we're drawing them. We're not drawing them as babies, and then we, we eventually, and eventually they become adult drawings. Oh my God! Imagine that. That's what God does. Wow. Anyways, um, we're not drawing them. Yeah, from that early stage. So what we're doing is we're jumping right into their level of maturity. What comes first when we want to build? Let's say we're building a Frankenstein. We build the skeleton, and then we think about. We think about. Um, the flesh and how the flesh sits on top and then this leg needs to be longer this is what happens when you guys forget about your space we all need space okay so do you see now does everyone see the transformation of this body here simply by thinking about the skeletal structure what we what we have at the end is a believable gesture what she's doing is a gesture she's calling on I don't know who she is Ophelia and Macbeth is or whatever Hamlet is giving her trouble whatever this is she's calling on something maybe she's a witch yeah I'm in the Halloween phase Okay, whatever's going on, look at how believable this is. The armpit line seemed to be a little bit out of place. It seemed to be, seemed to be like a, a really built man's armpit line. I'm just going to soften that up. And then the breasts. Remember, breasts are fat, pure fat, no skeleton whatsoever. They only hang off a skeleton like a water balloon. So what we're going to see is a bunch of fat. So do you see now how everything is believable? <coughs> Let's look at it before. Very stiff. Everything is not measured. There's no skeleton. It seems like part of the body has skeleton. So do you see how her her left rib seems like it has skeleton, but everywhere else there's no skeleton. It's like only half her body lost the skeleton, and the other half still has it. Um, this is what happens when you don't think about the unified skeletal form of the object you're drawing. It suffers. There's no symmetry. Skeleton is symmetry. Sink that in your brains. I'm holding all of you by the collar and shaking you until your brain come out of your ear, comes out of your ears. Skeleton is symmetry. Look at the biology of a human skeleton. It is perfectly symmetrical. Isn't it a miracle? Human skeleton. It is perfectly symmetrical. It is the object of symmetry. People study its miraculous symmetry. It is symmetry. And if you guys have trouble with proportion, it is most of the time symmetry. Symmetry is achievable when you think about the skeletal structure, especially with figure drawing. Okay? So I'm going to leave you with that. I'm sorry about Elise. Uh, we'll try to get to yours. I promise next time I critique, I'll try to make it as soon as, uh, as, soon as I can. Today I had a window of, of an hour of time, and it was my husband's telling me, you have an hour. And I'm like, what? So I just decided to stream. Um, I'll try my best to be available. One last thing with this one, I can't believe I forgot it, but it is the crotch line. The crotch line follows the stomach, and it goes this way. All right, some of these lines here. And a female is born.